there's another version, um, what some call the 81 books. And um, one thing we notice about the 1980, the 1980 Bible, this Bible we, we call here GNB, Good News Bible, but it's really the Pope's version of the Bible. You know, when you, when you investigate, like I said, search out the matter. So when you search out the matter, you get to find that the so-called um, the so-called uh, new and hard translation, this particular book that we call a fake Bible, you understand, know because it purports itself to be like a, a work of a work based on Ethiopian culture and language and the Ethiopian testimony. But actually, what we find is that it's it's this Bible here. It's the good news, the so-called good news Bible. So, you know, one thing we recommend, you know, like if they, if, they, if they were more honest with what they're doing because they're trying to, as we already said, take the ISBN, you know what I'm saying, the ISBN off of this and attach it to this book right, right there. So it's, it's like identity theft. That's like taking a, a, a Social Security number. So, in fact, perhaps we should just call it that. Mm-hmm. The ISBN, right, what we call the RIG, original ISBN number. What does this Bible over here do? It is a ID thief. Or ID theft. This is called ID theft. So we just compare both of these books side by side. You know, purporting itself to be the King of Kings of the 19. The 1961 Metz Afkadus, this particular book. So, you know, they said don't judge a book by its cover. But in, in most cases, we generally almost can. You understand? But when we get into the detail, you understand? They said the devil's in the details. And when you really sit down and compare both of these books side by side, you might learn, hopefully, what we mean when we say the Metz Afkadus of Hala Selassie the first is a superior, you understand, Amharic language translation as far as literature, as far as the roots that it uses from the good is, the, 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 the purity of the language, the attention to, to details and, and, and other elements that are more getting into um, the masterpiece level of Amharic and Ethiopian literature. But then when you read this one here, you know, you'd be hard-pressed to think, is this a Bible? I mean, really, is this, is this the Bible? It's as if you know this one, and you know the good is that's behind this, and even the Hebrew and the Septuagint, even, even compared to the so-called um, accepted ancient versions of the Bible, this one is, is, a, is a much better one, and most of the reputable... Um, um, ones out there like the IOTA program, the Yesus.com, though they offer, I think, this Bible too, you understand, um, they use this one within their, their Hebrew and, and, and Greek um, concordance, strong concordance level, because it, there's so much agreement when we start to get into the real roots. So these are the differences between these two books over here. You understand? And if you open this one, which is the, the counterfeit, it's like it's a counterfeit Bible. It, it's in heartache, yeah, but it's counterfeit against the Word of God and the clarity of God. It's almost like comparing the King James Version of the Bible with some of these uh, New World and New Translation and, and New International this and New International that. But there's one other aspect that we notice too that we want to make a, you know, make a reference to that in this particular Bible there's a mechdom, you know, there's a what they call a, um, a, a preface, and we notice something interesting that nobody took credit for the preface. You know, like usually when you come to the end of like a, a, a series of uh, paragraphs and maybe a, a short, like, introduction or forward or something. You even get initials or something like that. No one took any um, credit here 
for this. No one took any credit here for this. It pretends itself, you know, to be a translation, you know, like an ecumenical sort of translation. We see in the foreword it talks about um, for the Orthodox Church and for the Catholic Church and the Wangalawi Church and the Protestant Church and all. You know, it's, it, it's part of that mystery. It's part of mystery Babylon, because like we said, if you look at the Good News Bible and look at a lot of these new Bibles in a lot of different languages, and you do a little search into it and see, well, what's behind it, what's its reference and sources, you'll find that the Good News Bible is basically one of the main sources for this. And um, other people have done studies on um, the King James Bible compared to, like, the new versions we saw a couple of videos out there, I think Prophecy Club, a couple of others. I don't know if we have that yet on our, our website, but definitely since this is a subject matter that we, you can, if you don't know them hard, you can even be familiar with what's been going on with the King James Bible and these new versions and why some folks say that the King James Version Bible is a better Bible. It's not the so-called best of all scriptures, but for English speakers, there is a lot of... Um, structural and other accuracy by far when compared to these these newer versions of the Bible. I'm not saying that the new one should not be used, but as far as the structure, because when you start to study like the Hebrew or the Strong's Concordance and you start to look at some of these new Bibles, they even use inferior manuscripts as well in order to say that maybe the people who are using these manuscripts, we want to now translate from the ones that they rejected and find some little nuance in there so they can take out either the divinity of Christ or they can twist certain things. And we've seen this often in our studies of different Bibles, whether from the English, you understand, or, or from the Amharic level by comparison with the Hebrew and the, and the Greek. So we notice that no one takes permission or not even, you know, credit for that forward that's in the 1980 Bible. But there's another Bible out as well. And we thought we should probably say something about this Bible since um, the point of these videos right now are on Bibles, scriptures. You know, scriptures are very, very important. You understand if you study the Bible even, you notice that the old Israel, they went for several generations and nobody had any scriptures, and they found the scriptures in some hole in the wall. You know what I mean? But how that was such almost like a reformation for that generation. You know what I mean? To really hear the words, even in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah and Nehemiah, how, how the people stood while the word was, was spoken, and, and it made them, you know, they felt the word. They understood what this was about. They understood the importance of, of the covenant and the responsibility, you understand, of that particular special relationship with the Almighty God. Not that it makes you better than other people. You have more of a responsibility to do his will, you understand. And this is the other book right here. This is, this is, this is another Met of Caduce. Right, this has the 81 books in it. Now, if you, if you look at it, casually speaking, it looks similar to, to this one here. If you look at it, it looks similar. But if you pay attention to details, this is the Good News Bible in Amharic, which is trying to play identity theft with His Majesty's Bible, because it, it's flipping up and switching up the ISBN. Now, you see the cross is actually different. Now, also what's different is this has the 81 books. Now, what's the story on this particular Bible? Now, at least this particular Bible here, which also claims to have um, been printed, it's called Metaf Kedus, yeah, Beluyana, Yehadis Kidan Metahif, and it also has the 81 books in it as, um, as, as well. It says that this was printed. This one says, for the Ethiopia Orthodox Tawahdo Beta Christian Tatame. It was printed for the, the, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahdo Church. Let me say this one. And this is um, Ameta Mehiret, uh, it's, it's 1980. But 
that's Ameta Meherit or AM, which would be about um, 1987, 1988, say 87, 88, uh, in, in the so-called um, AD calculation. Now, this Bible has its own um, ISBN, has its own um, unique ISBN on it, and it has a short mechdom here by Abba Tekla Hymenot, uh, Patriarch Reise Likana Papasad Zechopia, um, the Patriarch, the head of the learned fathers of Ethiopia, is basically how one way it can be translated. So now what's interesting about this, you see this right here has the Old Testament, then it has the um, Apocryphal, what's called Apocryphal books, or we call the Middle Testament, and then it has the New Testament, you see. Now what's interesting to us is that the Old Testament is, is the same as his Majesty's, it's the same basic Bible, that means it came from, it was translated at the same time. You understand, know, it's the same book, basically. Then we get to the 15 books of the Apocrypha, which the 66 bring us to 81. And when we get to the Apocryphal books, we find the Apocryphal books also be a strong evidence and testimony to being part of the scriptures as they were translated by His Imperial Majesty and through the agency of the King of Kings of Ethiopia and the authority of the King of Kings of Ethiopia. So it has the apocryphal books, the, the Metafe, Metabian, um, which a brother of Ionias has translated, the Ethiopic uh, Maccabees. Um, look that up, get a copy of it if you can. You know, support um, the, the brother's efforts and check it out for yourself. It has Kufale, it has Jubilee here, it has Metafe Hainok as Haydnok here, so it shows that this was part of it. Then when we get to the New Testament, we notice it's the same translation. So even though His Majesty chose when He distributed this to the um, United Bible Society and the American Bible Society in 1962, the year after promulgation and announcement of this, He chose 66 books to, to put forward. You understand to those in the diaspora, and and I see there's a very important um, reason there, seeing that the King James is also 66 books, and when we compare side by side, and then go to a deeper level of the Strong's Concordance in the New Testament with the, with the Greek and the Old Testament with the the Masoretic Hebrew, it, it's a it's a very consistent, clear both the reasons why King James is better structurally as well as when we start to look into the Hebrew, Masoretic Hebrew. You understand there's more harmony there, which is very amazing. It's almost like all these things was done at one time, but we can see the agency, a makayanet of the Mensis Caduce, of the Holy Spirit, in that. Whether it's a, a Ethiopian Bible or even the Fringe Bible, especially during those particular times. This is why there's a war even against the King James Bible today with all these new so-called versions and perversions. But when we got to the New Testament, we saw it was basically the same, but then we started to see something very strange. I'm going to show you just a little bit of it right here. Okay, now this is, this is, this is um, Matthew, right? This is Matthew's Gospel. Let's go a little closer. Do you see anything? You see that last line that's really dark? The last line right there that's really dark? It's like an overtype. Right now, let's look at the next column. Let's look at the next column. Pay attention over here, too. See where our finger is? You see that right there? You, you, you see how that's darker? Now, if we could get a split screen and take this right here, right, and have both of these side by side, and we just count the words. Even if you can't read uh, them hard fluently, but you, you'll see what is the same, and you'll see... Other things are different. Now, here they change um, when we go to, uh, um, now, now this is His Majesty's Bible that someone sought to retype or type over and add in words. But by doing that, you begin to see, like, if you're looking at art and somebody has painted something else into a work of art that you know, and you're looking at it, 
you would notice almost immediately, even at a glance, that something is different. But then you might have to study it for a moment to see exactly what is really different. And then by knowing the art, and, and, and if you have a picture of the original art, you can even compare that side by side of what you're seeing there and say, this is, this is a counterfeit. This is a fake. Because it's pretending to be something that it's not. And that's what we're saying about this um, Good News Bible or this 1980 Amharic Bible and trying to put the word out as near and far as we can. Just watch out for it. You know what we're saying? Recognize what it is, you know, and recognize what it's not. And recognize the value of his, his Imperial Majesty's translation because it's part of that prophetic Revelation 5.5. You understand? This is what makes it so significant. Now, here it says um, in the New Testament, let's see if we can just compare this side by side so we can um, read both of what is in this New Testament one. What happened here is that they went over certain passages of the New Testament and inserted extra words and rearranged the typeset. So it's darker than the original typeset. So when you look at those things, you're scanning through it, you say, what happened here? Like an overtype, like, like they ran it again, or they did something strange right there. Um, so the Old Testament good, the apocryphal book's good, but it's the New Testament they focus most on, on, on um, changing or adding things or taking out certain things that really doesn't seem to make sense. But here's the passage, the first change that we observe appears to be in verse 18 of Matthew chapter 1. Now, in the authentic Metaf Kedus of Hala Selassie, it says this, Jesus Christos lidet in di nebre in natu mariam le Yosef betay chechigize saya gananyu now, this is when, when it says the birth of Jesus Christos was like this. His mother Mary was betrothed in the time that she was betrothed to Joseph, but not, um, not having met to say he had sexual congress. You understand? With the Holy Spirit, with the conception of the Holy Spirit, commences Kedusa. And Sa Tegenyech, she was found with conception of the Holy Spirit. That's what it says. Now, here in, in this retype, rewrite that came out roughly around 1988, 1987, 88, and the credit that for this publication is the Orthodox. Um, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Beta Christian, and it has it has a a, a mechdem by Abba Tekla uh, Hymenot, who is the patriarch of um, of the wise men, the 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 Reis the Reis uh, uh, Lika uh, uh, Lika Papasa the Ethiopia, right? So here it says Yegitachin. Here they are Yegitachin. Jesus Christos lived in the Nebra, in Natu Maria. Le Yosef betalche chigize sai gnanyu bemenfes do sat en sa tegenyech. Now, maybe you didn't pick up on what's different, but what's different now? They have a footnote here. The footnote says gitachin be milokal be Greeku hadis kidan ai genyen. Notice what it says. It says that gitachin yemilo. In other words, that which says getachin, saying getachin, the word that the miloka, the word that says getachin, the Greek in the Greek hadis kidan i genyim, i genyim is not found. I remember I read it and I said, well, 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 so why? If it's not found, why are you putting it there? And His Majesty doesn't have this here in the. In the Royal Amharic Metaf Kedus, in the Emperor's Bible, in the Book of the Seven Seals, it says, Ye Jesus Christosim Lidet in Di Nebere, the birth of 
Yeshua HaMoshiach or Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, like this it was. It was like this, basically. Here they say, Ye Getachin, Ye Getachin, Ye Yesus Christos and Lidet, in Dihnebere. And then they have a footnote down here, which says that the word Getachin, you understand? Know um, in the Greek New Testament, it's not found. You know, um, and that's just very interesting. So why are you putting that there? Are they trying? They didn't say it's found in the more authentic Amharic um, or or Gutters or anywhere else in our own which come. But so they, they're telling us what's not found someplace, but they're not telling us why do they mar His Imperial Majesty's um, typeset here with adding that in there, and then give us a negative a negative exp explanation. Basically, it's not over there. Okay, but why did you do this? What's the pro of what you did? That means it's probably a double negative there. Then there's another area down here, which let's just read this. It's in verse uh, 20. I think it begins with verse 24. Verse 24, where it says, Yosefim kala in kelfu neketo yegeta melaak in dazezo adarege. It's on ya winema wesede. Ye the quera lijuanema is kita walida de res. Allawet at him. Simunema Jesus alo. Now it's basically saying, that was two verses, 24 and 25, that uh, Joseph woke from his sleep and he did as the angel of the Lord of Adonai commanded him. And he took his fiance, his fiance, and the and and her 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 firstborn uh, child, yeah, the kura um or and her firstborn child is kita walidres that he he alawak at him. He did not know her. You know, there's a big controversy that oh she was a perpetual version, and that physically meant. That it was a physical thing and not a spiritual thing. It was a physical thing. Some people interpret that, but others would say, well, right here it says that that until like while she was with the Memphis Caduce, uh, uh tense or you know, conception and saw that he, he did not enter in. He did not violate that that you could say that that refuge, that mahit and that that womb. That's also what womb means in that sense, like a a refuge. Interesting in the good is you find that out. But here it goes on to say that um and his name, that that firstborn, her firstborn child, and his name Yesus Alo. And he called his name or or, or and his name is Yesus. Or you could say he said his name is Yesus, although that could be interpreted um a little differently. But let's go right here and see what's the change here. It says, Yosef Simka in Kilfu Nekato Yegita Melak and Dazizo Adarraga. Okay, what's the way? Uh, what was something seems a little different right here. We just can't, we just can't make it out right here. It says, It's on Yawin, Maria Menem, Wesede, Yabakor Lijuanem, is Kuta Walida de Rest. Okay, what is it saying? Um, different, different. Yosef Fim, Kainak Elofua Nekito, Yegita Melake, Melake and Dazazo, Adarege, Adarege. It's interesting because they have a retype there, but. Right off, I don't see what's different, but you can tell, just show you once again, you can tell how the text is uh, badly marred, like in the other space right here. In the space right down here, you can tell, you can see how this is, and then they put a footnote down there. And then over here, you can see that it's the same sort of thing. But we'll probably get back to you on that, forward to you on that. Right there, but you can see how this marred the text is marred there. But then when you look at the original text, 
you don't see that. You know, you don't see that, the original text. And over here, you don't see that. That's the same part which is like doubly, was doubly black in the other version, like they typed over it. And there's other areas, too, where they say, um, where they say strange things. They give strange reasons why they do these things, almost like they have forsaken their own Ethiopic roots, to, either to, I don't know, they said it's not in the Greek, you know, so where is it found? You know, and because it's in some uh, good as manuscripts, you know, there's different levels of, 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 of manuscripts since all of them had to be translated by hand. And many times they would not discard certain manuscripts even when they had imperfections in them. But they would keep them away. But sometimes these old documents, somebody would come along and, you know, um, per perhaps, you know, use them not understanding where some, some imperfections were in some documents. So there are better Amharic and Guttas manuscripts. And it's clear, at least from what we have, you know, read, you know, they said if it came from the Greek, right, they said it was first translated into the Koina Greek, most have reference to the Koina or the Coptic as their original source. For the New Testament, especially for the majority of the New Testament. So it just... It makes us ask certain questions, but the difference between uh, this one and this one, even if one said a choice between the two of these, I would say get this one, you know, was, you know because at least it has the Old Testament and the and the um, new t uh, the Middle Testament, you know, uh, some errors and 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 questionable reprint retypes and additions and omissions in it in the New Testament, but the benefit is probably the apocryphal books that 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 this has. So this has the 81, and this is translated from the same time as the Metz of Gedus, the Book of the Seven Seals of His Majesty, right here. So it's basically the same text with the addition of 15 books. But now you have this book, which looks very similar. And this is the 1980 um, Mystery Babylon Counterfeit. You know, the 1980 Mystery Babylon Counterfeit. So if you just look at both the covers, you say, oh, it has a cross, the same thing. But, you know, they say the so-called devil's in the details, but the truth is also in the details. So this is just keeping one's, one's up to date because the scripture is essential. You know, as Matt said, for my part, I glory in the Bible. And we as faithful Ethiopians and Hebrews and elect Rastafari should also glory in the Bible and know of his imperial majesty's Metz of Kedus, otherwise known as the Book of the Seven Seals. So if you want to know more about this, once again, our initial um, scribe into this particular matter is available at our website, www.lojsociety.org forward slash books. You understand? And stay tuned. More to come. Y'all willing. Shalom. Rastafari.